Hello. <laughs> What's up? Not much. I didn't have an emotional breakdown before we started recording this one. Are you proud of me? Nice. <laughs> yes. Did you cut your hair again? No. Oh, it just looks really, it looks nice today. I like it a lot. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you cut your hair or does it just actually look nice today? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I actually it's really like same. it for once. Aww. I think it's because it's been rainy today. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it keeps a nice curl, even though I haven't uh, washed it for a couple of days. That's, that's a life hack for anybody listening. Another life hack, too, is sometimes if you live near an ocean or perhaps a lake, if you dunk mm -hmm. your head in the water, then, then it'll get wet. It'll get wet. And then if you dry it out in the sun, best it'll ever look. However, this apparently only works for people with curly hair because I said this once in a group of people with straight hair mm -hmm. and they I think we're going to have me arrested. So they don't get it. <laughs> yeah i listen i would never share a life hack for a person with straight hair you don't have to worry about that on this podcast we're not going to talk about that this is a safe space we're not experts and also you have everything <laughs> <laughs> i just see people on campus like just brushing up their hair like it's nothing but they're like, oh, it's a little bit frizzy today. Let me just. Okay, yeah, I'm good to go. Like a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, stop. What? No. And you like, don't have I love... five different creams? <laughs> What's and you have to you? put them in at a specific order. And if your hair gets even just slightly too dry when you get out of the shower before you start putting product I in it. I don't absolutely weigh your head down and look terrible and you feel yeah. sick. Yeah, like look at this. Look at what's happening today. Mm -hmm. This is a triangle. I didn't, I don't know what happened last <laughs> night. I did it normally, same way I always mm -hmm. do it, but I woke up today and the second I touched it, you know how you can just feel it? It's like, oh, like something's oh, different. Oh no. Yeah. I feel it in the air. I feel it in the water. Yeah. Bad hair day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, that it it frames your face really nicely so it looks like it's on purpose that's that's so, really nice of you to say yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's a better. that's another life hack for you if you have curly hair you can get away with a lot more on a, a bad lot. hair day that's that's true my um <laughs> yeah. my dad's best friend when he was in high school they had slept in the car it was a, I, they had run away from home for a weekend on their way to buy a motorcycle. It's a really long story, but they had slept mm -hmm. in the car overnight and they were walking inside. And my dad was like, give me your shirt and I'll put my hair over it so I can use it. Like, or I'll put it over my hair so that my hair doesn't look so bad. And Jared mm -hmm. said to my dad, you give me your shirt to put on my hair because you have curly hair and curly hair always looks like crap. Looks like you took a mix master to it. Even when it's good, it looks like it, it looks, it always looks like crap. That's it. So, yeah, that's very backwards thinking. That's so interesting. Yeah, you know, because I it, feel like if somebody that... has curly hair and you're just kind of like, oh, that's cute that they have curly hair, and then when it's nice, like if we both were having a good hair day today, mm -hmm. you'd be like, wow, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's just an interesting have... <laughs> perspective. Like the the um the culture around it has changed. Yeah. That people are way nicer to curly hair that's true it's like a homophobia and racism yeah like it used to be so it's bad actually thankfully like exactly the same as that <laughs> <laughs> the same level <laughs> uh, <laughs> i understand your oppression as a person of color because i am ambidextrous <laughs> and i have curly hair so <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if anybody's That's not clear enough. <laughs> Just to be super safe, even though I know nobody's going to watch this in, in, except for you. Except for me. Yep. You just have to let people know. Just in case. I mean, I'm still glad you clarified because I could have gone on a rampage in the comments and just torn you apart. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really glad that 
you know, I don't have to anymore. <laughs> yeah. Phew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a relief. Yeah. Um, one more curly hair hack um, is that if you just buy a pair of hair scissors, you never have to get another haircut in your life. Maybe once or twice a year, but a, a monthly year? trip. <laughs> no. when's the last when's the last time i even paid for my haircut it was before neil I left on his mission since, yeah i haven't <laughs> um since i was 18 and at that point my mom paid for it for me so i actually oh you spent my paid. entire adult life i've never paid for a haircut that's the way to do it and i never will <laughs> <laughs> no because the thing is like even if you're not you Mm -hmm. or you learn how to do it yourself and even if you're not that mm -hmm. good it'll hide a lot of you know exactly exactly and then you can get better at it every time you do it because you're just practicing yes. it yourself yeah you can cut your own hair badly and that's fine yeah no one really cares that much mm -hmm. certainly no one else is going to comment on it oh looks like you get a bad haircut if anyone ever says that to you you're legally allowed to remove them from your life maybe with physical force mm -hmm. It's true. It's in the law. That's true. Yeah. We know the law. And that's that's in there. <laughs> As someone who has thought once about maybe going to law school at some point in the future, I think it's safe to say I know that's the, laws. the law. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I know a lot more about law than you do, genius. I was trying to come up with a but there's only so many ways that you could say law. Yeah, it's you can't Maybe make it sound like American one. Girl dolls. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I I don't need I can't listen. I it's the end of the semester for me. Okay. I there's I don't it's not there anymore, okay? And I'm sorry for that. I'm not gonna be clever. I'm not gonna have anything fun to say today. No. I'm drained. I'm done. <laughs> I like yeah, go on without me. <laughs> I texted you to see if you were available today, and yes. then I uh, forgot that I had done that. So I was getting sleepy, but I wasn't lying down yet. Oof! And that's the key, because then you texted me and you're like, "Yeah, I'm ready to go," and I was like, "You know." But if I had been lying down, you wouldn't have answered. No, no. and I I'd understand. <laughs> Yeah. that's totally valid he actually can't come to the phone right now because i'm cozy <laughs> <laughs> oh please i understand yeah 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 i think of of all the people in your life if i can't understand that like who is going to you know yeah <laughs> I mean, that's something do you really remember beautiful that... about our friendship <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that day that I drove up to Rexburg or I was driving through and I was like we've only got like six hours what are we gonna do and then we sat on we were sitting in your bed and you're like hang on I gotta show you this video and I said okay I'm gonna lay down put a blanket over me but I'm not gonna get sleepy I promise and you <laughs> said okay maybe what if I put a blanket on me too and then what we did for that <laughs> whole entire afternoon was just took a nap yeah. And then it was time for me to go. And I was like, okay, if you say so. Mm. Oh, I sure hope I don't get so cozy <laughs> and warm right now. Snug as a bug in a rug. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. no, I'm on that honk shoe me 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 era. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oops. <laughs> I'm um, finishing up my friend's dress that I told her I'd make, except for look at what I did because I'm a dipshit, idiot, stupid person. I put the hem mm. on the wrong side of the dress. Yeah. It's meant to go on the inside. In fact, yes, that's usually how it goes. How, like, it's not even like they're the same. Like, they're too very close different to me to, greens. Yeah, this is so a you satin. can't just pretend. Yeah. So I'm probably going to be. Satin is hard enough to work with without doing it backwards. <laughs> Dude, I know. I wanted to work with chiffon. It's not like a thousand times easier. It's certainly mm -hmm. not working with cotton, but yeah, I know how. I know how to work around it. I've mm -hmm. never worked with satin before, and when Grace said she wanted satin, mm -hmm. I was at the satin store. Leaves absolutely zero room for error. Like none at all. It's none. merciless. Yeah. 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 It's really. 
It's unlike this... curly hair, which covereth a multitude of sins. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be a curly hair person or are you going to be a satin person? Hmm? Mm. There are only two. Uh oh. Two options, two genders, you might say. Mm-hmm. You might. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> hey everybody <laughs> oh did i tell you i i I graduated today oh yeah i mean yeah. i knew that but just for the for, uninitiated if i forget thursday I april 25th yeah park it um so that next mm-hmm. year you can celebrate the one-year anniversary yes and just as you've done that, I hope you've all marked your calendars for my birthday that was posted on the the Monsters, Inc. video that we did that was posted on my birthday. My birthday, today's <laughs> April 25th. I am 25. It's all connected. Everything's coming together. And yet I still haven't I'm got like any dropping in the hints mail. that it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when this is posted, by the way. Hmm. Wish me a happy birthday. It's my birthday. It'll post on your birthday? Mm, well, it'll post on, like, the weekend before my birthday. Okay. But that's basically my birthday. What do you I'm want giving people birthday? time. I want a million subscribers. <laughs> 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 or just, like, like 12 million. or something. Yeah. That could be good. That could be good. Yeah. Whichever one <laughs> is more reasonable. My, um uncle well i guess not technically soon to be though my um aunt's boyfriend brett with whom she had two babies who are yes. light in my life and i love them so much i remember them yes yeah they're so sweet um, and little. they're so sweet and they're tiny and he has the world's a biggest forehead it's a normal sized baby head but the forehead's bigger than it should be i love mm. him yeah. i love him he's my best friend um brett recently proposed to melanie which is very good news and very exciting, but also on the call to tell me and my mom, he leaned over and said, I'm going to start watching your podcast. Like, I've proposed wow. nothing. Which, A, is the sweetest thing yeah. anyone's ever said. I love you, Brett. <laughs> if you do end up watching Hi, Brett. this. Big fan. Thank you. We- <laughs> yeah. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations on your engagement. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Congratulations on the two congratulations. congratulations on the two biggest moments of your life, your engagement and this. And your subscription to our <laughs> <Yeah>. channel. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I've been thinking of adding pronouns to our bio, but it's she they because it's she if you prefer if you refer to just one of us, but it's they if you're referring to both of us. I'm bringing it back to a plural pronoun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that idea at all (laughs) it's stupid it's so unfunny yeah no I really like it a lot this is unrelated yeah cool (laughs) I might even do that right now on my second device whoa you have whoa I have two devices that's amazing crazy um i'm not jealous um i was just i was already gonna get my laptop anyway so i also have two (laughs) devices and you're not special you have three (laughs) you also have an (laughs) ipad i don't have an ipad (laughs) (laughs) where did that go (laughs) i mean you used to have an ipad and now magically i have an ipad Okay. That would be really amazing because the last time you were at my house was Halloween. Yeah. And either And it took you, you... till April twenty fifth to notice that your iPad was missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you came down here for a special trip to just steal my iPad, not say hi, and go that back up to Idaho be at some so point funny. In between. <laughs> I'd really like okay. that. Name I wouldn't women even be bad. Handle women in STEM. Pronouns. Optionally add. Yes, please. it says type to find your pronouns and i typed in she and it says no matches found (laughs) (laughs) you're not allowed to be a girl anymore (laughs) what how 
Hello? Why is it a match system? Shouldn't you just be able to say them? I just want to type it in. Yeah, hello? Why would you have to type to find your pronouns instead of just adding them? Like, it has That's... an add button, and then you have to search for it? Oh, but you can't add they, them, and theirs. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be a YouTuber, you have to be non-binary. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna see if they to have male who's pronouns. Just recently come out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they do. <gasps> it's misogyny. They have male pronouns. Oh my gosh! Oh no! This goes all the way, way to, the way to the top. top. <laughs> Congratulations to all the men and non-binary people on YouTube. And if you're a woman, get bent. <laughs> okay here we go what's gonna happen to my I'm adding she now? i'm adding they okay everyone can view my pronouns save <laughs> can you make it so not like one single person can't view your pronouns well the only options are your subscribers or everyone oh but there should be a secret third option i agree with that yeah. Everyone but Dave. <laughs> that reminds me, um, did I ever tell you when I lived in Wilcox, there was a, a community Facebook page and then there was, over time, a lot of drama started happening on the Facebook page. It was called Wilcox Matters, but then it was also like, Wilcox Matters. It was like a pun. Because oh, it's see. what's going on in Wilcox, but then it's also like also, the, the people are important. Which, yeah. Which, and I, I, again, my good friend Sydney lives there now and i love them very much but also does it i love it there um it is not a good place <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean like i love it yeah and mm-hmm. i hope that sydney's having a good time um, me too <laughs> but anyway there is this huge drama controversy mainly and- revolving around mm-hmm. a man named steve so then they made a second community Facebook page called Wilcox Matters Parentheses Non-Steve Edition. And literally everyone in the community was invited except him. <laughs> That's funny. That's I have really never funny. felt so connected to a community. Like, you know how sometimes like you bond over shared interests or shared dislikes? Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. That was what everyone did Steve in town do? knew Steve. And I don't remember him. what it was. I would have to ask Cambie because he was really in on it. But okay. um it basically like two of the moderators of the page were like exes. Like divorced exes, not like and so <laughs> then Steve <laughs> started like <laughs> spreading rumors about his ex-wife who was a moderator on the page. So then, like, people were kind of divided into camps and, like, I don't know if I can trust Steve and, like, this whole thing. Dude, it was crazy. What? And then they created Wilcox Matters, the non-Steve version, and it got, like, within a week, it had, like, the same number of members. Like, everyone knew. (laughs) It was awesome. So the next time you talk to Sydney, ask them... If they know anything, like, if they're on the Community Matters Facebook page or anything, like, I would love to know. Yes, I mean, <laughs> they're fairly new in the community. So, I mean, so what better Sydney, way to get Sydney. initiated and to find <laughs> out what's Facebook going on right in your community, now. right? Yeah. So Sydney, if you're listening, please. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> it's like That's it's the most so amazing funny. thing I've ever heard in my life. I know. Like, that's the kind of thing that happens in a sitcom. <laughs> like, that would happen on Seinfeld. You know, like, modern-day Seinfeld. Jerry yeah. gets canceled on the Facebook would... page. But I genuinely George. feel like George, a probably. lot of my... A lot of my life. Um, especially... Well, not especially at that time. Just a lot of my adult life could easily be a modern Seinfeld episode. <laughs> 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 so, you know... Yeah, you tend to attract those kind of situations. And I mean that in a complimentary way. I I know. Thank you. 
Can um, the S in this video stand for not Steve? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so funny. Because we haven't thought about any of the other letters, so it's like, what does it matter? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I I quickly what I had to Google on my laptop was all the names of the people in this movie. Oh yeah, I know the names of the actors. Oh yeah, yeah, and I certainly mm-hmm. remember one of the characters because his name is the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh oh. <laughs> Why does this happen every single time we do this? I know <laughs> why. It's because I have corded headphones and I forget that they're corded and I tug on them. But like, <laughs> but still, it's <laughs> a little rude. <laughs> um, <sighs> so welcome everyone, once again, to Women in STEM. As usual, we are actual women in actual STEM. That's, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Today, we're going to be talking about the movie Meet Joe Black, which is so good. Really good. (laughs) It's really good. It's so good. It's kind of like inexplicable. Like it gives you this feeling that you're like, I've never, you would never feel it in any other scenario. Mm -hmm. This feeling is exclusive to watching the movie Meet Joe Black. Yes. Yes. I, of all the movies I've seen, and I've seen like a few, at least five, at least mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. four um, on your top four letterboxed, and then at least one more. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that I watch ten movies a day, but it's all the same movies on repeat, mm-hmm. so it doesn't like <laughs> it's the yeah. same number of movies, but like you're just clocking a lot of hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> and in that you know excess of experience that I've had watching movies very few have had the vibe of this movie it feels like strangely warm yeah and that's I mean that's the only description that I can think of off the top of my head it's just it's a strange movie yeah yeah but like similar to um I think uh, Waking Ned Divine, like there's a cute little humor to it. There's a good, mm-hmm. like there's something kind of in the story. Yeah, yeah. There's there's something that could on paper seem a little bit dark. It has like an almost supernatural element to it, mm-hmm. and yet the way that it presents itself to you is just so like, it's just charming. And it's fun to watch. Yeah, I think these two movies mm-hmm. actually have very similar vibes. Yeah. And yeah. interestingly, they're two of my favorite movies, but that's probably that's hmm. crazy coincidence. Hmm. Hmm. Probably unrelated, <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Um, letters. Um, Obviously, M can be me. Joe Me, Black. Joe Black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's not Steve. And then whatever is T and E and then meet Joe Black. Um, T can be for Tony Hopkins, which is short for Anthony Hopkins, who is in, this, in movie. this movie. He's in this movie. I <sighs> love you, Anthony Hopkins. I know Hi, we shout out Tony. actors a lot of the time, but like, j- like we so mean it every from the time. Bottom of my heart. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> we never say it frivolously okay when we say never. that we love sam rockwell we mean it when we say we love alan rickman we mean it and damn it all when we say we love anthony hopkins we mean it we mean it like we've never meant anything <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah so the t can be for tony hopkins that's good mm-hmm. e is tricky (laughs) the only thing that's coming to my head and we don't have to do this (laughs) is um exit the theater 
because my mom. <laughs> because. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like that it's kind of a string of mainly unrelated terms. Like if you've just not looked Steve, at Tony Hopkins. Not Steve, Tony Hopkins exiting the theater, meet Joe Black, you would not really have a good understanding of what's going on. No. With that alone. No. So that's kind of fun. Two of the four are inside jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. But one of them has been explained just recently. So if you've been watching mm-hmm. and paying attention, you'll actually understand most of the title by now. And you'll be ready for the quiz at the end of the video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hope you've been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh i can't like i'm thinking about the the ending of this movie okay i know yeah. i know but i feel like we have to start at the beginning we do we absolutely do i'm <sighs> just really excited to get to talk about it yeah this this movie has everything <laughs> yeah it really new does. york's hottest club is meet joe black meet joe black <laughs> um (laughs) basically i watched this movie like one time when i was 19 and it changed my life and then i met whitney and i was like dude you ever seen this movie (laughs) not immediately but like pretty soon but we've said before that we yeah the easiest thing to talk about vein of conversation the day that you explained to me about galaxy quest which mm-hmm. I think is why we br- why you brought it up because I, I distinctly remember being on that same stretch of road. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Learned about two movies that I hadn't seen and would eventually go on to change my life. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. because I have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And I have bad taste and that's why this works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I make my friends watch movies <laughs> That make them never want to talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> that make them say, you say something good about the movie, and then I'll say something say else. something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good movie. So you watched it at first at 19? Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's how old I was. Why is that interesting? That, that's a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little bit five years ago, if you think about it. <laughs> I'm not going to actually. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's just it the is... longer you take to think about it, the longer it will have been. It'll be like six years, and then even more than that, if you can imagine. What happens if I just never think about it, though? <sighs> hmm. Yeah, it's like if a tree falls in the forest. <laughs> 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 if things are happening but you're not thinking about the time that passes does time actually pass hmm i don't i don't think so i think that's yeah. how it works much yeah. to think about <laughs> or not that way time never passes mm-hmm. another tip um, for curly haired people <laughs> yeah. uh, if Rod you have straight hair plot. what are you oh. even doing here like how are, how are we going to relate to each other genuinely <laughs> um um, yeah broad strokes i want to start out with this movie has a twist early on which is that the genre of movie that you think it's going to be at the beginning it actually ends up it isn't which i love i wish more movies would do this just draw you in and then oh it's so good this take you out of the knees (laughs) okay so basically, our main character, Claire, is the name of the actor, and the character, don't remember. What's her name? S- S- oh. I thought Susan. Susan. It's Susan. Is it Susan? And then Allison is her sister or something like yes. that? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Who's married yes. to Jeffrey I knew Taylor. It. I knew it. Okay. I'm really so proud Susan. of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's like on her way to work and whatever she stops at a coffee shop and she meets this really charming guy and he looks a little bit like brad pitt but that's neither here nor there a little bit like brad pitt Pitt, but with blonde hair yeah he looks a little bit like blonde brad pitt yeah and listen that's okay (laughs) sometimes sometimes that's okay we've talked about it before and you said (laughs) you you voiced your opinion about this 
which I agree with. Uh, you know, we have said before that we are staunchly against blonde people. However, mm-hmm. if you're a little bit weird about it, you can have then blonde hair. Okay. It yeah. balances out. Yeah. If right? you're like it's okay. a brunette and boring. Inexcusable. What's yeah. wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. Be better. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I'd rather be blonde and weird than brunette and boring. Thankfully, neither. (laughs) 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 So basically, he's just charming, you know? And it's like, sometimes in movies that are made in this era, the like charming guy, you go back and rewatch and they're just like actually creepy. But he's but he's, he's not just delightful. He's, he's talking like genuinely to his sister really on the nice. Phone. Yeah. He's so happy to talk to her. He loves her. He loves her yeah. so much. And he's I mean, not afraid to show it. He's just so happy with life and the world. And he's also charmed by this woman that he met in the coffee shop. And they mm-hmm. like make a little connection. And yeah, he is that's just the genuinely thing, right? sweet. Yeah. 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 Like he, he looks totally like Brad believable. Pitt. That she is like almost immediately like, she's like, oh my gosh, like, I think I think I just fell in puts love. the like, hand out. She's like, like no ring finger. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So they really hit it off because they're both beautiful people inside and out. They have great conversation. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, mm-hmm. and this is I back mean- in the '90s when romance still existed. Mm-hmm. Where do they live? It better not be New York. Don't look it up. <laughs> just <Okay>. in case <laughs> you never want to know if you're like oh it's like a big city don't look it up <laughs> you don't want to know what Rhode Island <laughs> I'd rather it be New York what in the <laughs> hell this is actually <laughs> awesome because I just usually think it's better not to know and you can just imagine a big city that isn't horrible but I actually uh-huh. love that it's Rhode Island because they're they're um, not conforming to the same, you know, stereotypes that are in the genre. They don't live Every in like, single... Chicago, New York. No, in Rhode Island, nobody lives Rhode in Island. Rhode Island. That's awesome. Okay. And another thing that's so great that this kind of ties into what I was saying about how they don't conform to genre or whatever, right? They're they're leaving the coffee shop, and you know they keep stopping to turn and see if the other person's looking and they're like no i can't like, and like they keep walking a comic repetition they both keep it's missing like each other they so both keep looking back it feels like an mm. hour where they're just walking and like is he looking oh no i have to go to work and then like, like i would love to do one of those stop. edits it's <laughs> so it funny never <laughs> yeah. that's kind of how it feels anyway so you know they're kind of making fun of the genre a little bit you know they're playing around it's very funny and then have you ever been watching a movie where they're like they're walking across the street and then they stop to turn and look lovingly behind them and you're like watch out you're gonna get hit by a car guess what happens in this movie he gets hit by a car (laughs) it's out of nowhere it's the funniest thing i've ever seen like to this day i know that it's coming i've seen the movie i've seen this (laughs) clip by itself several times it drives me crazy it's so funny it's really in my head i made it's it a so bus funny because that's i mean it's really <laughs> funny in my head to picture it as a bus but the wikipedia is, is struck fatally by multiple cars it's, it's, he gets by hit so by a car, car. He gets it slams into him and he <laughs> rolls over the roof <laughs> and then He's lands in another car He's getting ping ponged around, <laughs> and she just. I swear to you, this guy. This. this is so <laughs> funny. This is the because <laughs> you think like it's just going to be like oh a cute rom com where like it's like a misconnection and then they find each other later or whatever and then it's absolutely not that because he dies in the first five minutes by getting he hit. He dies several so times. <laughs> multiple cars he gets hit by a car and he rolls over the windshield off the back of the car directly into another car (laughs) this is one of my favorite movies ever of all time do you know why now (laughs) it's really funny it's so funny (laughs) and it just catches you so out of nowhere because like 
because okay, you so think you they would never do that like you're so caught up in like oh it's like a yeah. beautiful budding romance and then they stop in the street and you're like oh they always do that on movies they're just making fun but nothing's gonna happen and then it actually happens it's shocking every time and again i've seen yeah it. like i know that it's coming and it's still just like <laughs> well that's the fun thing about it having so many back and forth is because like oh is it is it this one? Is it this one? No, maybe not. But we've had five already. It's got to be this one. <laughs> they just keep looking back at each other. It's ridiculous. But then, of course, right as he's hit by a car, she's turning the corner. And so she doesn't turn back one more time to see him get absolutely launched. Bus to bus to bus. <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> uh, and so, basically... He's, this is where he's it killed gets a little so weird. hard. <laughs> it's killed well, like 10 okay. times in a row. <laughs> so, we've, so we've got Just to make sure they her, like her super dead love interest. They run back and forth over him to make sure he's squished into the pavement. Like he's not coming back. He's dead. He died. Like that scene in Wait Until Dark. Have you seen Wait Until Dark? Are you asking me or the audience? I'm asking, well, both. Oh, audience okay. can comment down below, but you can respond to me right now. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna be like yes and no, <laughs> just in case. Oh, good. Um, I th- I think that I have, but I don't really remember it. Okay, do you know there's a scene right at the end? Um, it's a pretty good jump scare, where a character is walking through a parking lot, and then all of a sudden the headlights behind him, and then the car goes and runs him yes. into the fence. And then you think, oh my gosh, he's super dead. But then the car goes, <laughs> and then backs and forward, back and forward, back and forward like <laughs> 15 times. And he's like, he literally is, he's so dead. He's super, super squashed, dude. He didn't get any deader. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the car just <laughs> keeps going. And it's, it's a really fun car from like the olden days. So it's super bouncy. You know how cars <laughs> used to be really bouncy? <laughs> <laughs> You just know the guy in there is like, woo! Think he's on a roller coaster, just like having the time of his life. Yeah. It's a good movie. We'll ha- we'll talk about that one at a later date. Yeah, but, yeah, I know yeah. it's on our list. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it's basically that, but he's like hit by a van, and then he honestly oh, might get hit by a bus, you know, because there's just so much traffic. He's like in the most highly trafficked area in all of Rhode Island, and he stops in the middle of it and just. <laughs> it's so funny and it's so really good um that's the it, point at which the genre kind of shifts to something yeah. else because it can't be this cute little rom-com anymore because he died he's, he's dead. dead yeah he's super dead and then meanwhile we have her father who is anthony hopkins and he's yes. turning 65 soon and he's the head of this company he's a millionaire and he's like really nice guy you know, you think yeah. like a super rich guy coming to the end of his life, you think he, this is going to be like an Ebenezer Scrooge type of deal where he mm-hmm. looks back and thinks- He's a bad person and he realizes he has to change before it's too late. No, yeah. super nice guy. Not, just Jenny, his his daughter, his other daughter, Alice- Every character throw, in this him. movie is so likable. They really They're are. They're all just and like genuinely ways. so nice. Yeah, yeah. And they love yeah. each other. They really do. Like yeah. the main conflict of this movie is that Anthony Hopkins- thinks he's gonna die soon and he's got this like kind of worry of like have I done enough in my life like have I been fulfilled and is just like a generally a little bit uncertain about being near the end of his life but not in like a fearful oh no oh no I'm in trouble right like I've just just done so much wrong it's just like he's genuinely done so much good and he's like but was it enough what if I left my daughters and they're both like grown adults with careers and like one of them's married and like and they they have very successful lives and he still is like did I do enough for them and their main conflict between them is like which one of us loves him more you know what I mean like they're so just like a loving family everyone's super successful and nice it's like very pleasant to watch because you don't hate any of the characters you know they're so nice except for the ones that you're meant to hate Mm mm-hmm like there, they, there are definitely like bad guys in this movie. Never you fear. There are people that you can love to hate, but like it's all gonna be boring. <laughs> no, everyone no. that you spend a good amount of time with, you think, oh, it's yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. This movie rocks. It's so yeah. good. 
Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, death is going to come for Tony Hopkins soon. And he knows mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then here's the twist. Death personified. Death wants to know what it's like to live. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So death inhabits the body of a recently deceased young blonde man named Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> They actually killed him and reincarnated him for this movie, <laughs> yeah, or resurrected yeah. him for this movie. Yeah, that's true. Incredible production value. CGI can't do like <laughs> no CGI no, no. can't do that. He did all his own stunts, including getting murdered by several cars. <laughs> by so many cars. Every car that they in fact had on Rhode Island, they used yeah. in that shot. <laughs> they have to anytime you watch this movie they have to pay royalty to every single citizen of rhode island because they all <laughs> had to get in their cars and hit brad pitt in the sidewalk <laughs> every time <laughs> they're all lined up around the corner uh, <laughs> so anyway death inhabits the body of brad pitt and he comes back and he visits tony hopkins in uh, mm-hmm. in person mm-hmm and they basically make this deal, it's like a kind of unspoken, you know, where um, Tony Hopkins will teach um, reincarnated Brad Pitt mm-hmm. what it's like to live. Yeah. Um, and he gives himself a new name, which is Joe Black, which is fitting because if he said, hey, I'm Brad Pitt, everyone would know that something weird was happening. Yeah. Dead giveaway, yeah. you might say. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so he calls himself Joe Black and he starts hanging out with Anthony Hopkins, which is the dream. Mm-hmm. So he learns a lot about life because here's a man who has lived a long life and done so much with it. So he gets to go to his business meetings and see what it's like to operate all these like moving parts and still be respectful to people who work under you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Anthony Hopkins has two daughters that he loves so much. So much. And Death, as Joe Black, he gets to experience a, a family dinner. He gets to eat peanut butter for the first time, and let me tell you, he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that it was so much. The and he's main so selling point. weird. <laughs> he's, I mean, this is where Brad Pitt really brings out his acting chops, because... Mm-hmm. And maybe he just is like that in real life because I I don't think he ever had tasted peanut butter before. He eats it wrong. You know how you eat peanut butter? He doesn't eat it like that. However you think this man is going to eat a spoonful of peanut butter, you're wrong. It's different. He does not eat it that way. He eats it incorrectly, but he, you know what? He got the spirit. Mm-hmm. He loves it. And it's and like he maybe he's jar. eating it more correctly than anyone else has ever eaten peanut butter. Yeah, you but ever thought about it. that? Mm-hmm. Are you eating peanut butter wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that that was the main selling point for you because I I loved the movie. You know, I loved the rom-com thing. I loved the psych murdering him. That's so <laughs> funny. Like, I, there was no moment that I was, like, kind of unsure about it. Mm-hmm. But, like, I fell in love with it when he ate peanut butter for the first time. This is, he's never experienced a meal before. He's never had a body before. And now he gets to meet people and understand what it's like to have a business relationship and to have a familial relationship. And then he eats peanut and, butter. And to have a romantic relationship. And it's like, you want to cry. You're yeah. like, Brad Pitt, you're making me cry. <laughs> because like, I mean, and I was joking before, but like genuinely, when's the last time you thought about peanut butter? Like the tiniest little thing in your life to have someone just it feels so inconsequential but what if it was the first time that you ever ate it it's like that did you see that video of the guy he's like mid-20s and never eaten curry before yeah that like a a a transcendent he eats butter chicken and garlic naan for the first time as an adult what i would give 
I mean, it's incredible. It's, it's so beautiful. You see shrimp like, colors. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, look at all these things that I'm taking for granted. But if I were to try them for the first time now as an adult and I can recognize what I, what's happening. Yeah. Life is beautiful. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's just like everything everywhere all at once, right? Is like, how often do you appreciate the mundane in your life? How, how mm-hmm. often do you appreciate doing laundry and taxes with someone you love? How often do you appreciate what it really means to eat a peanut butter sandwich? Like the tiniest little, you don't need fancy anything in order to truly value life and see what it means to live. So think about that for a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Go sit down in the corner and think about it. (laughs) Don't come back. (laughs) It's like positive timeout. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh, what I would give to have somebody put me in a positive timeout. Yeah, just go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. And you get to be like, wow. Here, (laughs) gold star on your way over there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Not to be cheesy, but like these calls kind of do feel like that sometimes. Like, yeah, actually, movies are great. Friends are good. Amen. Mm-hmm. Now we can go take a nap. It's like 45 like life minutes. Life is worth living. Yeah. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, it's so, it's so good. And he's so weird because he has like the kind of basic understanding of like, he speaks English and whatever, you know. But his mannerisms yeah, like- are weird because he's not used to having a body. It's awesome. Yeah. Or interacting with people in just like a normal person right. way usually the he's only way you death. interact with them is when he's come to take you to the next world right yeah and so he interacts with anthony hopkins and then susan the daughter who is like oh i didn't realize you knew each other interesting like why are you at my father's house kind of mm-hmm. a deal and he... that would be a weird thing right to meet somebody at a coffee shop and you kind of hit it off like Ooh, and then he's like at your house He's sleeping with your dad. (laughs) In a way. (laughs) (laughs) But like, yeah, weird situation. She's a little bit like weirded out by it, but he's just like kind of naive and different from coffee shop. Different charming. But still charming. And so she's like, oh, okay. Delightful. Maybe I just read him wrong the first time. So then she's trying to get to know him again. Mm -hmm. The second time he's actually a different person. Mm Mm-hmm. Because of how he died super hard, like, like right away, so hard. I don't know if you guys have forgotten about that, but like, yeah, he's he's gone. He's, <laughs> like he's, he's dead as hell. Yeah, <laughs> Good. he's not getting any deader. <laughs> and, oh, also, meanwhile, and this is an important plot point as well. Um, Anthony Hopkins' company is trying. Like, there's a hostile takeover or something bunch of people on the inside are trying to crowd him out and anthony hopkins is like upset about this Mm -hmm. but like also you know yeah he's like he doesn't want his legacy to kind of you know be overtaken by these people and whatever but yeah he's also like well if i die though what's more important to me yeah do i need to be spending my last week at the office or with my daughters as they plan my birthday party and yeah. like enjoy everybody's company guess what he chooses um does he choose to be happy and spend time with his family good guess yes almost you. like you've seen this before no I, that would be you cheating no <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So meanwhile, Joe Black is learning about like business, but in the most superficial way possible Mm -hmm. because of how he doesn't understand it. And then he's kind of getting to know Susan a little bit too. And he's like, oh, this is kind of fun being like, you can talk to people and sometimes you can make connections with them. Have you heard heard about this peanut butter stuff? (laughs) And like, he kind of brings like like, this yes i'm more than one year old (laughs) 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 but it does kind of spark in her that idea of like yeah how much am i taking for granted how much am i appreciating my life and he kind of breathes new 
like vigor into her live I mean in a s- different way but similarly to how the guy in the coffee shop had done it of like mm-hmm. just a breath of fresh air different new how am I treating my life and so she really is kind of charmed by this by Joe Black like, by Joe Black yeah oh and it's actually super convenient because at the Ooh. coffee shop she didn't get his name oh that's right and so then actually death doesn't okay have to, you know he's just like oh i'm joe black and she's like oh of course i am so sorry but yeah. my mother is calling can i call you can i join the call in two minutes yes does she want okay. to talk about this because this is the movie that she walked out on that would be really funny <laughs> uh, she doesn't hello hi Okay. As if nothing even happened. Mm-hmm. Nothing mm-hmm. happened. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> uh, just um, Susan, memories of Joe Black are just flooding back to It's me been far too long since I've watched it. I'm... Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. <laughs> Um, Susan works at the hospital, yes? Yeah, she's a surgeon. And, yeah, she's badass. But she didn't operate on the guy because he was too dead. And also, <laughs> really her super shift dead. hadn't started yet. <laughs> Just because she was on her way when he got squished. Yeah. yeah. It's like so bad. <laughs> I cannot stress enough. <laughs> how hit by a car this man is <laughs> it's unbelievable uh and like you said they didn't she didn't get his name at the coffee shop yes so then he shows up to meet tony hopkins and he's like i know who you are but he's not gonna say it and so then joe black is like i'm joe black i'm uh uh, uh i'm with the irs because he can't say that He's like, what's something that's less scary? And then he says the IRS, and then he's like, ah, oh, shoot, that's more scary. <laughs> but he can't go back now. So then that's how he can do, like, under the guise of being, like, a tax person, he can, like, be involved with the business and whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's really, like, nobody really believes it. But Anthony Hopkins he's isn't, gonna, isn't gonna say outright, like, oh, he's not really from the IRS. He's just come to collect my soul. You know, <laughs> yeah, because that sounds so it's like, what are you gonna do? Even weirder somehow. Yeah, somehow <laughs> it's a little weirder. Yeah. I can't quite put my finger on it, but that's an odd thing to say. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, so Susan works at the hospital as a surgeon because she's a really cool person and a really established, like, um, or not established. What's the word I'm looking for? Accomplished. That's the word. Yeah. She's yeah. a really cool lady. Um, and Joe Black goes to visit her. And while he's there, he meets an old woman. Yes, the Jamaican who is one? Jamaican. Yes, she's Jamaican. Yeah. She's Jamaican. And he immediately starts speaking Jamaican at her. And Susan's like, You can't be doing that. Yeah, and you're like, you're like, wait, can you can is that allowed? But then it turns out that he actually brings this woman a lot of peace. And is yeah. able to give her the message that he would give her, you know. Because she's no really scared of dying. He's, she sees him and knows and he's like, that he's death. Yeah. She's, her time is coming too. And she sees mm-hmm. him and she's like, Mm-mm, get away from me, you freak. And then he's like, oh. And blonde Brad Pitt's face is really sad. And so then yeah. she's like, I mean. She's like, maybe no. you can sit down. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, so the, yeah, he like just makes a connection with her and is able to ease her mind. And then later when she passes away, she's not afraid because she's no, already and met she's, death she's spoken to him face to face and he speaks her language and he understands her yes exactly and that's fine he knows how to communicate well, with her and you know interesting because he brings her a lot of comfort but also as she's dying there she asks him to do it and mm-hmm. he's like no it's not your time yet but not because it's actually not her time but because he's he doesn't he doesn't want to do her it. To go. He doesn't want her to die. Just he made likes this, this lady. Yeah. yeah, and she's like, and she like brings him comfort in his role and his job, and knowing 
that life is impermanent and that's what makes it precious and also she tells him you can't be here this isn't your spot like and he says and maybe you know it's and it's not like it wasn't impactful for me at all I didn't really even care about it all that much but he says I just don't want to be alone anymore and that's fine yeah because it's a hard job you know you only get to meet people briefly and they're always scared of you angry yeah angry or confused or you know and now he finally gets this chance to understand what like why why don't they want to go right and he realizes Mm -hmm. that for himself like i I don't want to go i don't want you to go Mm -hmm. and again that's fine (laughs) it doesn't even matter that much no it's actually pretty funny if you think about it <laughs> yeah no uh-huh. but you know what is funny <laughs> he gets creamed by that car anytime if you're feeling a little bit too emotional about this movie you just have to remember he gets hit like a <laughs> it makes it bullet it lightens the mood <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the other fun thing that'll lighten the mood is, um, and I, I say this every time we talk about this movie, anytime it's brought up in any kind of conversation whatsoever, I have to tell the story about my mom because my mom's not a movie person. <laughs> she doesn't really like movies. And a lot of times when I say, have you seen this? And she says, no. And then I start describing it and she's like, oh yeah, no, actually I have seen it. I just blocked it out. I don't remember it all that well. Um, or like I'll sit her down and start watching a movie that she says she hasn't seen. And then halfway through, she's like, oh no yeah I saw it I have seen this yeah she just doesn't remember a lot you know it doesn't retain her memory doesn't retain that sort of information she just doesn't care about that all much this one I said um Olivia showed me meet Joe Black this weekend you ever seen it and she like she turned white (laughs) (laughs) she saw like in a cartoon it was like before you were born (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the day of december 19th 1999 Eight. at 3 40 p.m 1998 i'm yeah. sorry you're right 1998 that's when it was i would have been yeah yeah because mm-hmm. it was three months before i was born in 1999 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like she had specific she had day time everything the gps coordinates at the drop <laughs> of a hat she did she knew what theater she had seen it at because and i said this just recently on this channel as well but because there is a bit of a weird sex scene in it and Mm -hmm. she went to see it with her family and her father who (laughs) got up and left (laughs) and now you can understand all four of the letters of stem for today (laughs) exiting the theater it's so funny like it's not like explicit it's just kind of Mm -hmm. awkward yeah it's really awkward and so it's like it's weird (laughs) if there's any if there's like one like negative point on this movie it is that but because it goes on kind of you can see it's just awkward but you can see why they did it right because yes it's the first time he's ever experienced life and having a body and having you know yeah an attraction to someone and whatever and so it's awkward but it's like it's going to to be. be exactly yeah. yeah like that's the point but also that doesn't make it like okay for example we just watched um we're watching avatar the last airbender with my friend kennedy i've said this before on this mm-hmm. uh as well but um we made it, uh, she made it to season three and last night we watched the beach <sighs> it's a rough one yeah it's supposed to be it does what it meant what it means to do very very well yeah that doesn't mean i have to like it yes exactly it's really you can recognize what it's doing yeah but yeah. still like it's a little uncomfortable yeah yeah That's and funny. i will say it's a lot more uncomfortable to watch with someone than by yourself i'll just go like this <laughs> and then i know where to cut it and we're back hey nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> it's as if nothing ever happened it's nothing ever has really if you think about it I, dude <laughs> okay it, nothing's happening <laughs> i made no-bake cookies yesterday 
what's today mm-hmm. today's thursday thursday april 25th the day that you're today's officially thursday. done with school forever I, or I until later later whichever yeah you know? <laughs> yeah yeah anyway i made no big cookies on tuesday it wasn't yesterday um and i made them for my friends because i love them and i want to treat them well um and we ate them all but now i'm really mm-hmm. sad because you don't have any because there's no more left yeah, yeah. do you understand that's what I'm going the problem through? with no baked cookies because they're so good and you just eat them and then you're like where'd they go there should always be more. <laughs> there should always be more. There should be a never. <laughs> if I, I'm so serious about this too. If I ever met a genie, one of my wishes would be, there's always no baked cookies in my house. Mm-hmm. Like, fresh ones. F- fresh ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. I actually I agree eat. with that. Like, think of how many of the world's problems will be solved if everyone could just eat a no baked cookie. Or two. Yes. Yeah, so real right now. You know. Maybe seven. Maybe if they're just sitting, there. it doesn't matter because they're so small and yummy, and they like basically don't they, take up any room got, in your stomach. You can eat as many as you want. And oats? Are you kidding? That's a power they're healthy. Bite. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And sometimes if you eat too many of them, then you can say to your friend Al, "Please take these away from me, but don't take them away yet because I'm not done eating them." And she says, "You're going to be sick." And I say, "I don't care," and you just keep eating. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> that didn't happen to me. I'm being hypothetical. <laughs> Imagine a world in which this could happen to you. That's the game that we're playing right now. <laughs> None of this is real. <laughs> and I actually, I actually don't even know what no bake cookies taste like stale. They, they don't ever. I would. I don't know. How what could they you? Like There's the literally no way. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen, and they're so easy to make. They take twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Like because it's in the name, you don't have to bake them. You have to cookies, turn up no. the heat on the stove a little bit. But that's a little okay. bit. It's okay. It's easy. I'm happy to do it. Absolutely. If potatoes are God's gift to the vegetable world, no bake cookies are God's gift to the baking world because they are so, like what can they not do? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They have they're given delicious. so much. They're easy. They're healthy. And they're delicious. Did I say that? And also, they're so yummy and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So, like... <laughs> and the list goes on into infinity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said infinity. Yeah, I heard that. Thought I, said I heard all affinity. the letters. <laughs> You're sorely infinity. mistaken, my friend. <laughs> you misheard. <laughs> did I tell you? Yeah. I did. I sent it to you and Allison. My teacher said um, fornicate instead of fabricate. <laughs> she's talking about a forged document <laughs> he did what with the document it was awesome <laughs> and did you... <laughs> you fucking eat with my document <laughs> <laughs> just real quick before we before, my professor joel once um joel. the beginning of the semester we know hey, joel. joel we hi joel we love you um he once said at the beginning like the beginning of his class right he's setting up the semester for us and he says, Joel's tip for success. So that's what the PowerPoint slide says. But what he says mm. is, Joel's tips for sex. <laughs> <laughs> Stops and doesn't correct himself. Because <laughs> he thinks it would be more awkward. To <laughs> but y'all heard it. <laughs> and it shouldn't be as funny as it was. But I was, tr- I was crying. I was trying so hard to keep it together. He's like, nobody wants to know. Stop. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. I took a class on, um, mm. I mean, I've taken like classes on like child development and whatever and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But one specifically on the sociology of the family, you do have a unit just called sex. Nice. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're like, oh, do I have any homework like to do? You like check your little calendar, your little homework schedule. It's like three six. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's for homework. <laughs> you know what would keep up our spirits? If we talk about Meet Joe Black again. Do you remember so that one part where he gets hit by a bus a lot of times? <laughs> yes. And then people swarm the How street with I baseball forget? bats to beat his dead body. <laughs> Just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A oh, co-ed so soccer good. team of eight-year-olds have to come and <laughs> run across the crosswalk just in case. <laughs> in cleats. <laughs> oh, this movie is gosh. awesome. It's really, really good. I don't know how it's many really times good. we have to say it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's really fun. It's super good. Peanut butter. Um, should we talk about the end? I guess so, yeah. So basically, like, Allison, who's the sister, is planning this extravagant birthday party for their dad um, because they all love each other so much. Mm-hmm. And her, basically, her main conflict is, like, sometimes I feel like you're not really, pl- pl- uh, what's the word, present when I'm trying to decide on a cake flavor, you know? And he's like, well, I just have other things on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> because death is sitting right next to him <laughs> he's a little stressed in love with his daughter also <laughs> but it's awesome because he's just like I- pick whatever flavor you like better or let's have two cakes like he's like living large you know they have this beautiful party a live like swing band they're on like this beautiful like brawling green with a fountain and like it's gorgeous and everyone's coast. having a beautiful time yeah the coast of rhode island <laughs> <laughs> it's the most perfect evening you can yeah. tell it's like and you can see hot, how but it's many... nice and balmy yeah mm. yeah it's like perfect weather and everybody's having a good time and you can see how much he has genuinely impacted people's lives for the better. Like, it's not just, like, a party for a rich guy where a bunch of other rich guys show up and none of them really care about each other or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you were saying earlier, it's not the stereotype of, like, a rich old man that has to, like, Ebenezer Scrooge his way out of a situation really fast so he doesn't (laughs) go to hell when he dies. Like, (laughs) everyone, he knows everyone there by name. There's, like, 300 people attending this party and he knows all of them. And they all, like have a genuine place in his life they so you can see him. like he's worth having a party for right and everyone's Absolutely. there to genuinely celebrate his life everyone except oh no it's evil business bad guy he's here ah, what are we gonna do no. never you fear because meet joe okay. black is at the desk and he yes. says Hello, I'm Joe Black. I'm from the IRS. You're in violation of these codes. And suddenly just has the knowledge of all of the, the like, bylaws and codes within the IRS structure. He knows intimately how to mm-hmm. take down this son of a bitch. And he does it because, because he has become friends with Tony Hopkins. He absolutely has. And as we all know... Only two things in this life are certain. Death and taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. It's a perfect punchline. It's like 90 minutes of pure emotion and you're like, this is the best movie I've ever seen and then for that punchline. (laughs) (laughs) That, like comes out of nowhere i did not see it coming at all like i remember being so (laughs) so stressed because this whole time i was like i mean because everything is happy for him this party yeah and you know you know business is bad like things are going on oh no what are they gonna do and there's no clear resolution to it Mm -hmm. up until oh and something Mm -hmm. that's also a little bit sticky is that allison's husband works for her dad yeah. And so then mm-hmm. people are trying to get him to be part of like the takeover group, but then he's like, I kind of have this loyalty to him 
because he's been so good to me and I'm also actually part of his family Mm -hmm. so that's two Mm -hmm. reasons Mm -hmm. so there's that like thing where he he's kind of having a moral dilemma yeah but don't worry Mitchell Black just fixes it (laughs) Mitchell Black yeah I actually have a theory too because again Allison's um Allison's wife nope yeah Allison's male Allison's wife wife is uh (laughs) Jeffrey Tambor yeah who as we all know goes on to be um uh, George and George. Oscar Bluth. Yeah. Yeah. Not and George Oscar Bluth. That's Job, but separately. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the greatest show of all time. We all know. As we all know. Yes. Arrested Development. We've all seen it. I like to think <laughs> that that's Darkest Timeline. Like, mm, that's, that's what like he... if he had yeah, been yeah, convinced. You understand. Yeah. If Joe yes. Black hadn't stepped in or if he had been coerced. Then he yes. would have become, mm-hmm. yeah, he would have <laughs> the, the worstest person in the world. Yeah. He would have colluded with ISIS. <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so, so dumb. <laughs> Lucille. I don't care about Lucille anymore. She's she lies. Lies. No, I'm saying there's a loose kill. Uh, it's so <laughs> funny. Words that sound like other words. It's like in Flushed Away, where he's like, "Watch out!" Like wave, and they all go England, and they do the wave, and he's like, "No wave!" And they look around. It's like they're all about to drown. It's so good. Hooray for Millicent bystander. <laughs> <laughs> really the only thing Mike's Mike has ever been wrong about. Is that he's he didn't so adore wrong. that movie. He's so wrong. He's yeah. so wrong. He said that the soundtrack was bad. Those are classics. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was, just, I was so hurt. Genuinely, like, genuinely, like the song Dancing with Myself by Billy Idol, like super famous song, and everyone does it. Anytime I hear it, I'm taken away. To the world of flushed away <laughs> that's the first thing that i think of it's like <laughs> it's such a good movie anyway um it's so good before it's so we good. talk about the ending ending i do want to mention one thing which is that um when susan and anthony hopkins who surely his character has a name as well but at this point who cares i want to say it's bob <laughs> or bill or something yeah it's something like Old that white some person. just like super normal white guy name yeah i could look it up i'm not going to though it's fine <laughs> um he they're like on a helicopter together because he's rich yes um and they're talking about love and she like is like well i kind of i don't know like i met this person and it might be something you know she doesn't she doesn't know what to say and he he's like talking about the experience that he had with her mom, who presumably is dead, because she's not well, there. Really estranged. Yeah, but it doesn't People. seem like she would be super that estranged, because he's talking again, about he's a really good guy, a really and good guy, super tiny. And he's <laughs> talking about his experience of love, and it just seems so like genuine. Like he wouldn't just be talking about somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> but he he just gives her this advice, which like isn't really advice on like something specific to do, but he just tells her about what he thinks love is. And it's just like so touching. He's like talking about passion and changing your changing your life to be able to fit this person into it right and she's like oh okay (laughs) it's like a lot of pressure but she's kind of like okay maybe I will you know it's just a super sweet moment like between these two characters he can't give this advice to Allison anymore like she already found someone that she loves yeah who unfortunately is Jeffrey Damber but (laughs) yeah but what could you do (laughs) <laughs> and he's like that's already done and whatever but susan you have a real chance here <laughs> you see this kid he looks just like brad pitt he looks just like brad pitt <laughs> and he's really sincere so think about that for a minute <laughs> yeah yeah 
Um, so I just wanted to mention that. I forgot and then that we can, scene. Yeah. It's really lovely. It's so good. I love, like, Anthony Hopkins, I uh, read somewhere, because he just recent. I mean, recently, probably five years ago, he, like, fairly recently found out that he was autistic. And mm-hmm. it was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because, like... <laughs> yeah. I remember he, hearing about that. Yeah, like, he, and he said that's the reason that he acts at all, is because he has just always done that like he knows how to mask and imitate facial expressions so well um he made a career out of it and by the way a very (laughs) successful one very successful one absolutely yeah (laughs) Yeah. silence of the lambs hello do you know he doesn't blink in that movie except for like on purpose like you're anyway freaky he's so cool no one even told him to do that he just did that he's a freak yeah because he's just he's like i know exactly how to interpret this character 10 times better than you do (laughs) and he's right yeah and he's right and he does that for this one too because like the micro expressions on that man he perfect like it's yeah he's a little afraid to be at the end of his life but the week is not about him avoiding his sentence it's just no it's about him embracing his life yeah i have a little bit of a warning here okay okay let like i'll take the week to learn how to be okay with this Mm -hmm. and then i did make the most of it i am really proud of who my daughters turned out to be and the lives that they've made for themselves Mm -hmm. i'm okay i can go so basically at the end of the movie they're at this party and claire forlani aka susan is looking gorgeous of course stunning really pretty yeah (laughs) really pretty really pretty dress and she's like happy and having a good time and like talking to her sister like look at the party you planned like this rocks you know Mm -hmm. having a good time there's like a little bridge between the party and the the like home and Joe Black and Anthony Hopkins, who has a name. Is it Bill? Bill feels right. It's like something physically. like that, you know? It starts with it definitely starts with a B. Yeah. It's not Brad. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. Bill. Uh, we know everything. We never have to look anything up. So it. smart. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they like walk over the bridge. And then only Joe comes back. And that's Looking not symbolic or anything. It's fine. He comes back and he's looking a little confused. And you realize, oh, hang on. That's not Joe Black anymore. That's the guy who just got run over eight times. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we have to keep bringing that up to lighten the mood. Over. Because the end of this movie is, like, so, like, it's, it's every emotion. So, so much. It's so much. And so you just have to kind of be like, <laughs> remember when that guy died earlier. <laughs> and that's funny. I knew. Anyway. Yeah. So he's coming out. He's not quite sure why he's wearing this fancy suit and why he's at a party. And, you know, there's and clearly again, some sort of. And he, Brad, uh, Pitt. Brad Pitt is such a good actor. Like, like you absolutely believe this physical changes because you know even before yeah. he speaks before he converts immediately all, the first time you see him you're like oh he's edge, a little different and then he walks back over and you're like different guy yeah. totally different guy it's so good yeah, just the way he holds himself yeah he, i was having a conversation like a couple of years ago with ian and max talking about like oh who's somebody who seems like they're just like a star but they're actually an actor Mm. you know yeah and i was like brad pitt like he has the look of like he's you know he's a star he's just pretty but he but he's not he's an actor yeah and they were like okay give some like examples and i was like obviously me joe black are you crazy (laughs) have you ever seen it (laughs) what's that one what was that one that he did a similar time period no <laughs> anyway, you 
you look that up. He comes back and you learn without anybody saying anything that death has decided to give this man another chance as a thank you for giving him a chance, basically. Right? So now Susan meets this man again. The second time? For the second time. Meets him for the first time for the second time. Because they already hit it off. And they could have had a chance together. And then he became a different person. But now, he gets to have a second chance. And she gets to meet him again. The guy at the coffee shop who loves his sister. And just wants somebody to take care of him. And he'll take care of her. And that's the movie. (laughs) And they say, and he says this. He says this. I remember this. He's like, where do we go from here? And I don't remember what she says, but I just remember him still being hopeful. Yeah. Like, after the most confusing thing that's ever happened to maybe anybody, he's just still like, he's like, you know what? Domestic. That's okay. Yeah. I don't care where we're going. This but whole we movie, going. yeah, is so just hopeful. And it gives you a lot to think about. Also, I forgot to say one thing, um, which is like before they walk over the bridge and then he comes back alone, he's like, they're like dancing or something joe black and susan are dancing it's one of the they have a few just like quiet moments where they embrace you know and in one of those he just says thank you for loving me and that's fine (laughs) okay yeah no and then he leaves and then he comes back and he's the same but he's not the same and they get to start over and she realizes Mm -hmm before who he was like she lets him go knowing that he was yeah death and it's um this like great loss how like she felt genuine love for joe black and but it's okay and he's gone she can try again with this new person who was gonna be the person originally anyway it's fascinating. It's uh, so good. It's, I mean, death is inevitable. And that's not a bad thing. And the biggest thing that he was worried about, right? He didn't want to be alone anymore. He didn't mm-hmm. want to be alone anymore. And it's so beautiful because he's he walks over that bridge with Anthony Hopkins together know it for the first time he's made a friend yeah and he made a friends with the jamaican lady in the hospital and he he knows people and he like he can cherish that and hold on to those relationships forever he'll never be he'll never have to let those go he gets to go with anthony hopkins they could be friends like they're not i like it's you know and he's been able to live it's just like a week But he gets to experience so much that it's worth it. Like just one week of life. And he's like, now now I know. Now I get it. And I know what people are trying to hold on to so badly. So I'm good. And he's good and he walks away. And then you just have to sit there. Yeah, to reiterate, this is fine. Totally okay. All right? like everything's good you know that's all i'm saying (laughs) this movie's the best (laughs) so please watch it please please watch it you'll like it you don't have to walk out of the theater you'll just it's a little uncomfortable for like a minute and then you'll be fine and then that's the only thing even if you want to and it's so even move forward yeah skip that part if you wanted to mm-hmm. so probably it's fine it. yeah you like wouldn't miss it's not a big yeah yeah do it <laughs> this movie is so good <laughs> it's really good yeah. yeah yeah it definitely has similar uh vibes to waking the divine because anytime i even like if it's my like, brain I'm is gonna tear up thought, I'm yes. it's inevitable exactly yeah. if my brain like I'm I'm just going along 
in my head, right? Like if a thought happens to brush against the ending of Waking Ned, I I dissolve. I'm a mess. They're standing on the cliff with the drinking song playing in the background. God, it's too much. Ned. And they're all drinking and the, they're giving the kid a whiskey because he's Irish. Yeah. Like he could walk. <laughs> he's old <laughs> enough. <laughs> Uh, it's so good it's like they don't have to say but you can you just know that the movie is about like the core of humanity you know oh so it's friendship and community that binds us all together and makes life worth living oh okay oh okay that's fine no look at the okay that's fine oh you you know i have to go to work tomorrow i mean school and deadlines and assignments yeah no it's okay because it's the little things that make life worth living (laughs) i get a peanut butter sandwich tomorrow yeah like if you had one week and you knew that you had one week like how special would that week be even if it was normal yeah and again it's like that scene in about time where he just takes him he gets a moment to just repeat a day um yeah it, it's exactly like that right this just these moments of like if you only had this amount of time or if you went back to redo this day yeah like how much more would you appreciate it if you were eating butter chicken and garlic naan for the first time as an adult man how i did have garlic naan today would that be? yeah good for you thank you <laughs> Yeah, it, that's yeah. It that's was what good. Life worth living, genuinely. Yes. Yeah. Like value the little things. Mm-hmm. And eat more garlic naan. You know that. I mean, I feel like everything should come back to that. If you're sad, <laughs> you're not eating enough garlic naan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like at the end of the day, what is life really about? If not this. Uh, parentheses garlic naan <laughs> like that's it <laughs> yes um that movie that i was oh yeah i don't know why i brought it up it's called burn after reading it's got i mean stacked cast uh brad pitt george clooney tilda swinton francis mcdormand john malkovich jk simmons huh? like a huge number of all star i did not like this movie by the way and I don't remember why I brought it up. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, we were just talking about him being a an actor, not just a face, but being an actor. Yeah, yeah. He's stupid in this one, but also he gets <laughs> like he gets got like pretty pretty good. Um, Whoa. He's. I mean, yeah, it's incredible. It's amazing how committed he is to these roles. That he'll allow himself to be brutally murdered, <laughs> murdered time over and, and over time again. again. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, integrity. Wow. Mm-hmm. that's an yeah. actor <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway it's I mean meet Joe Black mm-hmm. movie of all time movie of all can't time. stress this enough I actually today um, changed my because I on my letterbox to top four mm-hmm. I had three that I was like these have to stay and then I had one that I was like I'll just put this until I can think of a different one Mm-hmm. And today I changed it to Major Black. Maybe nice. it might change again. It's always a variable, but like, like well, movies can like your movie, taste in movies can be impermanent. That's the, the beauty yeah. of life is we can we can flow, we can move. The only one mm-hmm. constant in my life so far, from the time I've been um, in utero, has it's it's the Prince of Egypt. That one's that mm-hmm. one's that one's never ever going away for me apparently, but yeah everything else can ebb and flow <laughs> and we're what hoping we're your... praying actually ravenous who will flow maybe will yeah, <laughs> yeah. maybe we can get some maybe get out of here leave some room for somebody else yeah there's Hello? nothing else in here olivia <laughs> i like i need you to t- like tell me i'm being so brave right now because i have not like i've not talked about it I know I've talked about it, but like, no, mm. you have no idea how much I've not talked about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
the true oh that's how i am with, and this is embarrassing too but that is how i am with star wars <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm like, oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. Like, that's not me, but switch? of course it is. But, yeah. But it is. And there's yeah. nothing that I can really do about that, you know? No. We could talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant, like, planning ahead. We could schedule in a Star Wars like yeah 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 series where you could get out a good amount of thoughts where i can just invent because yeah. it's like yeah there's so much to be said and i know that everyone else has already said it but i didn't say it like okay. i haven't said anything <laughs> yeah, you, want quite to, frankly your silence is so... deafening <laughs> yeah. it's so annoying yeah but what i'm saying is i i can relate and you are being very brave actually thank you you are too On the bright side, Star Wars isn't, like, <laughs> at least it's popular, you know? At least people yeah. have heard about it. Well, don't to, for me, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer it to be the other way. Oh, I'm like, no. oh, I have the thing that I feel so strongly about, but at least nobody's heard of it. <laughs> 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 if only we could swap. Because this is hell where I'm living right now. <laughs> uh, it's too late. It's so we sad. have no, we have no, it's nothing. We have, yeah, no, we can't do it. anything. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. Um, there was, Life is so fun. <laughs> it is it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But, but that's it's... not, you know, it, two things can be true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Real quick. I was going to tell you about my dreams. Oh yeah, I see you. I'm just sitting really still. (laughs) (laughs) Can you you hear me? Yeah, sorry about that. (laughs) Yeah, we both think the other one is frozen just because we're we're just (laughs) sitting, (laughs) waiting, (laughs) thinking. (laughs) We're watching. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, okay, two dreams. First one, pretty funny. Shane, Shane Maday, Ryan Bagara, and Stephen Lim of Watcher TV fame. Oh no. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is so weird that it does this. Yeah. Okay. It is. It's On like- my laptop, I know why, and it's that. If it's um, plugged in, but there's a video going, then it doesn't really charge. It's just plugged in. And uh-huh. so at a certain point, the battery gets too low and it freaks out. Yeah. So I could tell that was happening because I could see the battery draining. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was just Zoom gonna... trying to shut us down saying, no, you've, no, enough. Okay. <laughs> you've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it. We're done. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, we haven't. Not yet um okay dream number one um yes okay so um shane maday ryan bagar and stephen Lim. you're familiar yeah they're the ones from watcher tv <laughs> they're the ones from watcher tv famously from watcher tv yes yes and basically no other projects just mostly bad <laughs> and that has been going really really well for them um yes. in my dream they though didn't backtrack immediately no, it's not and, like funny. two days later. Make a bad business decision. At least stick to it. <laughs> like anyway, I do not believe yeah. that they did, like. Did you do no market research before this? You couldn't predict this. <laughs> you didn't see this coming. Maybe people being like upset. When, yeah, it's like when Crunchyroll like made their subscription like way more expensive or something and it's like the number one group of people most notorious for pirating things is western anime fans like and you thought you could just raise the prices and people wouldn't just steal it (laughs) like hello (laughs) you have to know your audience this is an obvious thing that could happen (laughs) (laughs) you can't even like there's nothing to say no yeah um anyways so in the dream something 
had happened that caused them to lose all their business. Um, and they, <laughs> this was back, by the way, when we were still living in Silver City, you and I had been living there. Oh, yeah, of course. And they showed up. The same said, hey, Silver City apartment with no cabinet in the bathroom. <laughs> no cabinet in the bathroom. Awful roach infestation. We've all seen it. <laughs> they show up with all their stuff, all three of them, to move into the apartment with us. And we knew this was coming. We were expecting them, but we were also like, can't believe they're making the Watcher TV guys come and stay <laughs> in our two bedroom apartment. That's so. What was going to be so... the situation? Because there was one bedroom that had three beds in it. It's a bunk bed yeah. and a regular bed. And then there was another mm-hmm. bedroom that didn't have any beds in it. It just had like clutter. Yeah. Were they going to stay there, or were they? Oh stay no. In the, bunk bed? in the beds. <laughs> so then, where were we going to go? Do you see the little thumbs up? How did it do that? I want to do that. Wow. I want one. How do you do that? You stick it with your thumbs up. Anyway, <laughs> so they were, okay. we were, we had to stack the bunk beds. So we had three bunk on mine and then two on yours so that we could all fit. I was still on top, uh-huh. and then we had two underneath me, and then one on top of you. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we just added this. Okay. We just added Got a it. bunk. Yeah. Um, and then they each brought their own dresser, because they had so much stuff. So, mm-hmm. the clutter room was now so full that none of us could open our drawers. <laughs> none of us. <laughs> they were- Yeah, obviously. Every single one of them was so jammed. But, like, we had no other options. Like- yeah, there's this is not where they room in that apartment for anybody else. There were yeah. there, not really enough for two of us, really. Yeah. But yeah, certainly not three grown men. No, and I... both of us. That's fine and both us. of us <laughs> in a two-bedroom anyway. apartment, but only one of them is used as a bedroom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. again, bedroom has awesome. no shelf. Bathroom has no shelf. Yeah. Bathroom has no shelf. Of course. Yeah. 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 Bathroom has anyway. no cabinet. No. You just keep the toilet paper under the sink in a little basket. Yeah, really normal. <laughs> and hope that there's no cockroaches in there when you grab a new one. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Fun game! <laughs> anyway, it was super uncomfortable because they were all like, they were being really, really annoying about it. They were trying to find jobs because of how they ruined their last one. Oh, but we'd mm-hmm. lost patience mm-hmm. with them. Which isn't based on real there. life at all. That's just a dream. <laughs> no, it's just a random thing. Yeah. so it was just like you know how time passes in a dream it was like a week but a day too it was a long it Mm -hmm. felt like a long time um and they were just bad roommates and that's really all there was to that one i just thought it was kind of funny it is Um, funny (laughs) yeah second dream supernatural movie okay but like good and i don't mean just like as someone who has seen the show and watched it would be like oh nice i mean like oscar winning good i mean like oh. indie i mean sweeping so good it was a supernatural movie but it felt like no one knew it was a supernatural movie it was all the same characters. oh because it was good <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah good writing what the hell I mean, it's this kid, not in my supernatural. Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> it's less likely than you think. <laughs> I was like the most, it was the weirdest thing because the whole time I was like, having, the whole dream was just people talking about this movie mm-hmm. and not knowing the source material, not even knowing that it came from another, like came from a show. Oh, interesting. But, and I don't, I don't know the plot. I didn't see it in my, in my dream. I just, like, oh, that, I remember that's seeing. That's too bad, because you could have made bank. I could have. I could have. <laughs> just like, eventually, when I make that Lumiere and Cogsworth prequel movie. Where they, they're <laughs> gay lovers, but Cogsworth is a murderer. Do you remember, do you remember that dream? <laughs> yeah. That's that crazy. That was crazy so many layers <laughs> yeah. that one's that one's really gonna bring in the big bucks when i make that one uh, yeah. and it, it, it could have happened again but 
No. I do, I like, I distinctly remember though, Misha Collins did win an Oscar. So, <laughs> and he was yeah. like, finally. <laughs> <laughs> A full <laughs> decade of Castiel. <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you. So wow. then if, if you now dream the plot of the movie. Uh, and now I know who to send it it'll to. Be, yeah, because yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know That's your great. first instinct upon waking up after having had a dream supernatural plot, you'd be like, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to just go ahead and delete that file real quick, you know, and that's yeah. totally fair. <laughs> But I've never once had a dream about anything related to any of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm really proud will. of you for that. No, yeah. yeah. You're mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it's that's it's too late for me, but you're still you're still free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that rhymes, yeah. so you know it's true. Think about that. I always do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay I have to go fix this stupid dress okay good luck <laughs> thank you I love you